Oh, hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to be taking a look at a very exciting, outstanding, incredible After Effects tutorial where we're going to be creating the effect you just saw, like an LED light panel sort of look. And this is based on a video by uh, Vice News, actually. Uh, a video that talks about uh, Bitcoin and blockchain technologies and uh, and they made this really cool video about it where they, uh, this is actually real, they animated it, uh, put it on an LED panel and then recorded the LED panel. We're not going to be doing that because obviously that's too much effort. So we're going to recreate the whole thing inside of After Effects as best as we can. So this is what I've done and uh, yeah, let's, let's do that right now. So first of all, we're going to go file new and create a new project. Very simple stuff. We'll create a new composition and I'm just going to make it full HD and we'll maybe make it 15 seconds just doesn't none of that really matters but you know composition name uh, we're gonna call this one dash animation or something like that I don't know basically this is going to be our sort of uh, the 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 composition where our animation is this is not going to be what the final composition is so if that kind of makes sense I don't know let's create a new uh, in fact we'll just create some text doesn't really matter at the moment, we just need something on there. So I'm gonna just gonna write film dice because that's the name of my channel. Make it a little bigger and I'll sort of center it a little better. All right, now that we have this sort of basic composition, we just need something in there. What we're gonna do is select our first composition. I'm just gonna drag it down in, onto this icon to create a new composition that has that composition in it. And we'll rename this, we'll call this two and then we'll just call this like LED panel effect or something. The main effect we're going to be using to achieve this is CC ball action. So I'm going to come into my effects and presets here and type in CC ball action. And we're going to select that and I'm going to drop it on here. Immediately you get this effect which looks insane all right so first of all we're going to mess with our grid spacing so i found 16 to be sort of the sweet spot so i'm going to set it to that and the bull size to be about 38 that's the those are the settings that i used you can you know make this make these larger if you want you can make the uh the led lights larger it's entirely up to you but these are the effects the settings that i use now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use some expressions and set up some controls to sort of streamline this project before we do anything else. So I'm going to create a null object and we'll just hide it and I'll rename it to controls. And inside of here, we're going to get some uh, expression controls effects, some slider controls. So we'll click on this and we're basically just going to recreate these uh, grid spacing and bull size effects. So I'll name this grid spacing. I'll press control D on it. Oh my God. All right, so I'll press control D on it to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna rename this ball size. Is that what it was called? Ball size. All right, so then what I'll do is I'll click this lock button on the effect controls here. And this just may means that if I click on another layer, it won't open the effect controls for it. And I'll hit E on top of uh, my animation layer here, and it'll open up my effects. Then I can drop down the parameters and come down to grid spacing. And I'm going to hold Alt, the Alt key, and I'm going to click on the stopwatch, and it gives us the expression panel. And don't worry, this doesn't actually, you don't need to know how to use expressions really. You just need to use the pick whip tool here and drag it up to grid spacing. Drop it on there. Easy as that. And we'll do the same thing with bull size drag it up here and drop it on there. And then we obviously need to uh, change the settings here to be the same. So grid spacing was 16, bull size 38. And there you go. That's all you need to do. I'm gonna call this, uh, rename this layer to base layer. So this is just sort of our most basic layer. We're not gonna apply any effects to it. All right, so now let's actually start to create our LED effect. So obviously, We've got uh, the basis of our effect here. You start to see 
sort of how it's coming together, but it doesn't look so good yet. And that's why we're going to duplicate this layer three times. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna be the basis for our uh, sort of color fringing effect, uh, chromatic aberration, whatever you wanna call it. Basically where at the corners of the screen, you get uh, sort of some color separation. And this is a really easy effect to do. And this will work uh, for anything. You know, If you wanna do sort of create chro chromatic aberration, this effect will work for that. So we're gonna grab a effect called shift channels and we're gonna drop that on top of base layer four. Cl click on your take red from green and blue and just set them all to full off. And then I'm going to copy this effect. So control C and then I'll change take red from to red. Uh, come down to my second layer, paste and I'll select green for this one. And then I'll come down to my third layer and paste it back on there and blue. So now we have red, green, and blue. And what we're gonna do is select all three and change the blending mode to screen. And now it looks completely normal again. However, if we separate any one of these, you can see we get this color fringing effect. And it's different for obviously whatever, uh, whatever layer. So, you get a lot of control here. So if you want to separate the the red and the blue and then the green and the purple on another layer, you know, you can do whatever you want. But for us, for this effect, what we're going to do is just set the uh, scale to like 99. Maybe a little less than that. We'll go 99.4. And I'll also... Uh, just shift it a tiny bit off center just so we get a little color fringing in the center as well. Uh, I'll change this to 99.5. All right. So that's pretty good. Good start. Uh, what I'm going to do is call this red, green, and blue just so we get an idea of what these are. First of all, real quick, I'm going to, I forgot to mention, you need to uncheck this lock here. Otherwise, that that's just going to be locked up there forever. So... Um, just to show you sort of what we set up the expressions for before, we've duplicated all these effects, but if I change any of these settings, they all change together. So, you know, I don't have to individually change each effect. So that's why we set that up before doing anything else, so we don't have to go and do that again later. So, nice. This is a good start, but it doesn't look anything like the final effect yet. You know, we, we need it to have this big glue blue glow, uh, sort of, there's a 3D effect on the edge. Right now, we don't have anything that looks like that. So, what we're gonna do is create a new adjustment layer. Drop this top, and we're gonna call this something real nice, like a LED effect, all capitals. It's really bold and beautiful. All right, so to get started, I'm going to apply a glow. So I'll drop this on my adjustment layer here. And we're going to, first of all, bring the glow threshold all the way down to zero, maybe 5%. And we're going to change it from original colors to A and B colors. This will sort of allow us to create the uh, blue glow effect like we see here. And we're going to set this to like, it's like a really light pale blue. And then this one are more of like a darker blue somewhere down here. And we'll uh, turn up our glow radius to just something like that. So this is gonna be like a really tight glow right around the lights. But you'll notice in the original, we have glow all the way out here. So what we wanna do is duplicate our glow effect. Obviously this looks really awful and we're going to turn up our radius really high. So it sort of fills the entire screen. And then we can play around with the intensity so you sort of get it around to where you want it, but that's sort of the start of our glow effect. And what I'll also do is add a fast blur, just the legacy fast blur, and I'll drop it up top and just change this to like about one. We'll repeat the edge pixels 
and that's just going to sort of make it so it's not so sharp because we're going for sort of you know an older effect we don't want things to look so sharp we want it to look sort of grungy a little noisy and uh that leads me to my next effect we're going to add a noise and i'll drop that on the bottom changes to about eight percent and that's going to give you a noisy look and this is entirely up to you you don't have to use the fast blur or the noise but i do because i like to make it look a little grungier a little darker so that looks pretty good i'm gonna leave it at that uh, another thing you can do actually is if you put a noise at the beginning and you turn this up i'll turn off the original noise you'll notice that it doesn't actually affect uh it doesn't create a noise over the whole layer but what it does do is it creates a noise uh sort of around the actual lights themselves and if i play this you sort of see you get this uh grungy look around the edge of the lights which can be kind of cool to do at uh if you just put it at sort of a low setting you know it gives it sort of like this dancing look and makes it look a little less uniform which is kind of cool and i'll put that at like 25 percent just so it's a subtle effect and then i'll turn my noise back on all right so we're starting to get close to the look but we're not quite done yet uh next i'm going to add a optics compensation uh again you don't have to add this but it's something i like to do make everything a little less uniform and i'll drop this between the first noise and the fast blur and what we're going to do here is just create a lens distortion so i'll turn it up until we start to get some movement and i mean really if you wanted to create the look of sort of a old television that sort of bulge out in the center you would have it uh move backwards but what i like to do is reverse the optical compensation and have it come forward at the edges which doesn't make a whole lot of sense but it's just the sort of look i like but you know you can play around with that you don't even have to use the effect but it's uh what i used in the original so i'm going to add it here and we'll just put it about 40 just so you get again a slightly less uniform look so now let's add a bit of a 3d effect because you'll notice on the original towards the center you get these sort of circular looking lights but if you look to the edge uh, they kind of stick out a bit and you get a bit of a 3d look so what we're going to do is click on our base layer we're going to duplicate it Control d and we'll call this 3d effect and what i'm going to do is turn it into a 3d layer hit okay it doesn't actually matter okay so what we're going to do is first of all if you want to do just the most basic easiest to do effect just change the scale to about 101 and that will as you can see make it circular on in the middle and then towards the edges you get the sort of 3d effect but if you want it to look a little better we're going to create a cc radial blur and we'll drag this onto our 3d effect change the type to straight zoom and then we'll turn up the amount to about three or four and then you can see again in the center you've got circular on the outside you've got these sort of 3d lights and in my opinion this looks quite a bit better um you can turn up the quality if you want you can turn down the quality which will save you a bit of render time obviously you don't want to turn it down too much but it also doesn't really affect it too much considering again we're going for like a grungy look so i'm going to set the quality to 25. all right so we're getting close to the end with that sort of uh final look we've got uh something i did in the original um was also add a fast blur to the uh red layer so i sort of set this to like just somewhere about like a somewhere between five and ten will do it and that just gives it like this sort of glowy red uh around the lights which you can see on the original that way you don't get such a sharp edge on the red uh color fringing and it also gives you more uh character in the center i guess i don't know man i'm just making up words now uh, fast blur i also added to the blue layer uh and what that's just it's basically just going to give you a blue blur like this and i changed that to about a five and again that's that's just for character 
All right, and really that's pretty close to being the, the full effect. Um, what I'll do really quick is just animate uh, a mask to sort of come across here just so we can animate this on. All right, drag this across and we get it animating on. Now, something you can actually do is um, add a posterize time effect. So if you don't want it to be like 30 frames a second, you want it to look a little more, you know, frame ready, uh, you can drop this on at the very top because otherwise it's gonna make our noise run at a slower frame rate. And we can change this to like 10. And that's just gonna make it a little more blocky. You know what, let's make it a little more interesting, give you something cool to look at. So I'm gonna add a rotation keyframe and then just rotate it to negative 43 or whatever. So it sort of rotates as it comes in. And actually what I'll do, I'll move the text towards the center so our anchor point is in the center. And then obviously I need to reset the position here. And then it's gonna rotate in and sort of animate on. Nothing too exciting, but when we come into this uh, composition, it's gonna look a little interesting. So that's pretty cool. I'll. Uh, get rid of the posterized time effect for now, just so we get the full effect here. So what's cool about this effect is it kind of looks like the animation is, is basically being controlled by the lights. So as something moves across the screen, it's not the lights moving, it's the lights turning on and off respectively to create the animation. And that's what happens in the, in the original video, the Vice uh, news video that we're sort of copying here. Um, so that's the effect we're looking for. and. As you can see, it, it looks pretty cool. It looks uh, fairly similar to the Vice News uh, video that we've got here. Not exact, but uh, pretty close. Feel free to play around with it and uh, make it look a little closer. What I'm gonna do is put the project file for this in the description as well as a link to the uh, Vice News video. And I definitely recommend watching it because the music, the animation, everything goes together to create a really cool video. It's really well done. So definitely check that out. Uh, feel free to download the project file. Yeah, so that's about it. If you want to know how to make any other effects, maybe you saw something recently in a movie TV show, uh, leave a comment and I'll do my best to make a tutorial on that. All right, well, that is the end of the tutorial. So remember to leave a like, uh, subscribe for more and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys later.